Right, you join me in my first episode of Right Roast Tasting. We're here in Dark, Dark, Habit. Dark Habit. So we have two coffees we're tasting for this first episode. They're both from the barn. They're this month's new release. One is from Burundi, one is from Rwanda. Personally, I'm looking forward to the Rwanda because I get very excited about Rwandan coffees. Mm. Number one is Burundi, a Moruta number 26, lot 26. Right. Yeah. Okay. The smell is a little bit of a dark, rich mm. smell. Nice. Nice. You get this nice kind and of deep, nice yeah. and, um, good body. Great body. One of my favorite coffees. It's a strange here. It was a uh, Kenyan from, from, from a barn. And we kind of keep that punchy, full body experience. They do, don't they? Yeah. Mm. Amazing. It's very rich, this one. Okay, I'll tell you what it's not. It's not fruity. So you don't get much sort of the bite that you get. The yeah, it's not too acidic. Cocoa on the nose? Yeah, but they're not, not overly so. Their flavor note descriptions are dark cherries, cacao, and then smooth. So the flavor notes sometimes I think are mis misleading because taste buds are subjective and descriptions are even more subjective. If you swirl it around in your mouth more, yeah. like you get that cherry mouthfeel and cherry acidity, slight cherry acidity coming out. You're right. Let's cleanse the palate. So we're going to try the Rwanda now. This is called Mahembe. I'm not smelling much like the other one. That is so velvety. Again, their flavor notes of butterscotch, orange blossom. I'm going to hold off on that because I'm not getting that yet. I think that's on the nose, the butterscotch. That's Rwandans don't disappoint. I don't know what it is. I, you shouldn't really say that you love coffees from one country. These days, roast profiles can be so varied. But Kenyan. Kenyan for you. Yes. Rwandan for me. It's depth. Rwandan coffees always have depth that I love. Swirl it. Swirl it. It's not good at boiling it. That releases the zestiness. And the, well, in this case, the oranginess. Yeah. Mm. Right, so I'm going to go back to the Murata, Maruta. Yeah. It's cold now. Yeah. Right, now some coffees, as they get colder, kind of retain their, their structure. They just sort of allow certain elements to get stronger and others recede into the background. But this one almost is changing its character. It does develop over time. I'm very impressed. This one is like it's shed its skin and become almost something else. Originally we were getting a certain kind of tea-like structure. That's disappeared now. Yeah, the, the dark cherries are not so prominent now. Now yeah. they've, they've become light cherries. Oh yeah, it's way more cocoa-y. Isn't it? That kind of goes, transitions. Like the acidity is kind of diminished. I don't think they're darker cherries. I think they're lighter cherries. It's weird. We have, we have a cherry battle right yeah, here. Yeah, we've got <laughs> This is the subjectivity I'm talking about with the taste buds. It's as different as you can feel. The, the cherries beginning. has changed. The cherries have left the building, I think. The Maruta is a Jekyll and Hyde. It starts one way, develops into another. It's still smooth. Yeah, yeah, it is. Different. But, but something different is coming yeah. through, yeah. Back to the Mahembe, whereas before it was very sort of orange, zesty, and velvety. Now it's even more orange. Really coming through now. The butterscotch is receding. The I'm, oranges are taking over. I still keep my opinion that the butterscotch is on the, on the nose more in the... That kind of, that kind of follow through, yeah. yeah. It smells like butterscotch, but tastes like orange. What is it? It's my head. So, in conclusion, a delicious Rwandan, and a Jekyll and Hyde, strange and wonderful Maruta. Both from the bar, they can be bought now, that's January 2016, and uh, just check where you can get them. You can get them online, you can get them here, and um, see you very soon.